Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is The Power of Self-Esteem. In this episode, we are speaking with Clarissa Burt, who is an internationally acclaimed, award-winning media personality, producer, director, writer, author, public speaker, and former supermodel and winner of the Celebrity Survivor Show. With hundreds of television and film credits to her name, the who's who of international and American women brings over 35 years of entertainment industry experience in both international and American markets. Clarissa is the founder and CEO of the Limelight Media, a multimedia platform consisting of TV video, a podcast, and a digital magazine. Her shows can be seen on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, etc. And her podcast is heard on 15, distri 15 different distribution platforms. Her best-selling book entitled The Self-Esteem Regime, published by Roman and Littlefield published on November 11th, 2021. The audio, book was, the audio book was published and recorded books two weeks later. She was the first American to present Russian TV at the Kremlin, has had two private audiences with Pope John II honoring her social work. Mm -hmm. As the ambassador of the United States, she actively helped African women win the Nobel Prize Peace Prize in 2011. I also wanted to give a special mention that in June of 2022, Clarissa was knighted by the Royal Order of Constantine, the Great and Saint Helen, joining the ranks of 350 dames worldwide. Clarissa, oh my gosh, it's such an honor <laughs> to have you, you on the podcast. You have <laughs> an amazing resume and um, it's such an honor to have you on and I can't wait to dive in to you know, all about your book. Um, but can you give the audience a little bit more about your background and how yeah. you, where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to rather, you know, normal people. And I just had a dream when I was really young. And that was, I wanted to be a model. That was my thing. And I would watch movies and I loved Ava Gardner and Rita Hayworth and all the most beautiful gals out in Hollywood when I was a kid. And uh, I knew that someday I just was going to be on stage and in front of a microphone in some way, shape or form. And of course, by the time I was five, I was Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. Oh. And, and it kind of all started from there. You know, I, I did didn't see the stage again for a very long time because I went through, you know, some awkward stages as a kid and the ugly duckling thing and, you know, divorced parents and moving around a lot and whatever else. And so when I graduated high school in 1977 in, uh, in New Jersey, it was so close to the city, to New York city. And that's really where I wanted to be. I wanted to be the, with the, you know, in the big lights and the bright, you know, bright lights, a big city. And that's what I went to do. So I started, as a secretary there, I mean, you know, I never thought I could model. I just never, you know, I, would ne I was very low in self-confidence and uh, people, you know, sort of cajoled me and I went, well, okay, if you think I can. And, <laughs> and kind of the rest is history. Um, but, you know, self-esteem has just been one of those kind of um, themes that has seemed to repeat some, you know, a little bit in my life. It kind of brought my attention to the fact that so many people are suffering from low self-esteem. My mother was a beautiful woman, is a beautiful woman. But, you know, back in the day, she, you know, oh, don't take my picture. I have a horrible in picture and pictures. And I look up, my mom was beautiful and, and it was silly. My grandmother, I have to lose weight. She didn't need to lose pounds. I have to lose weight. So she took two diet pills choked on them, perforated her esophagus and spent the next six weeks in the hospital. And I thought, well, that was kind of silly. You know, what are we doing here? <laughs> then I had the great, the great, great fortune to model. I was modeling, you know, pretty much all over the world, but I lived in Italy and I was modeling with like the top 1% of some of the most beautiful women on the planet and not all, but some of them you could tell were having difficulties, whether it was with drugs or toxic relationships or bulimia and anorexia, anorexia. And so I, I just thought, wow, what's the, you know, the common denominator between my mother, my grandmother, and these <laughs> supermodels, yeah. you know, I was like, what? And of course, you know, it was, it was lack of, of self-esteem. And 
So for me, knowing that, you know, the, 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 the path that I, you know, took where life took me, I knew that I had had my own struggles as well. I think as all we, we all do. Right. Mm -hmm. So nobody ever kind of gets off this rock without having some sort of problem, you know, along the way with self-esteem and guys as well, by the way, we're not talking just women or girls, guys need, you know, this, 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 um, good, happy, healthy, healthy self-esteem as well. So that's kind of the, why I wrote the book. Uh, people, you know, want to, well, why? would you of all people thinking you know, after you read my bio why would I ever have of course I have problems and I've had problems with self-esteem because life happens mm-hmm. and it will trigger you no matter who you yeah. are how much success you've had I mean Madonna has said uh the Kardashians I've seen different articles come out you know people would, oh, that you would never uh another phenomenal phenomenal Latin singer I have her name I can't remember what it is off the top of my head uh you know 21 million followers on Instagram kind of people and they're yeah I, I, I've got problems with self-esteem. I'm worried about my weight. I don't know if I look well. I'm worried about what, you know, the, the clap back on social media. Yeah. Which brings us to a whole nother chapter, the whole social yeah. media thing. Totally. So, yeah. Lots of, lots of different ways that, you know, life will sort of unfold in front of us and present to us different, you know, different realities of, you know, where we are on this self-esteem journey. Yeah. And so, um, what are the four pillars of the self-esteem in your opinion? Yeah, I think that they, you know, the four pillars to just make it like, you know, really compact are look good, feel good, be good and greater good. So we all know we're looking good. We're feeling it. You know, you feel you're looking good and you know, why not? Yeah, of course I'm looking good. I'm feeling pretty darn good about myself. Mm -hmm. Feel good. Well, diet, exercise, and nutrition, because it all works as one. This is taking care of the body, a lot of self-care and making sure that you're eating proper foods for, you know, to keep yourself, to keep yourself healthy. Mm-hmm. I, for example, I'm an entrepreneur and a solopreneur. If I go down, it all goes down. Exactly. You're a mom, you're a mom. If you get sick, you know, I don't know your situation. I don't know you well, but usually the husband's off at work. Mom's home with the kids. She's doing, you know, a million other things, working and podcasting and all the things that you're doing. There's no days off. You're, right. still, you're still working. To my point, <laughs> you're still working, right? So you really want to, you know, have an advantage, if you will, by, you know, sort of, you know, you know, taking good care of yourself uh, along the way. Yeah. Uh, look good, feel be good. Be good is everything that we know and we learn. Um, mm-hmm. You're being good with your finances, with relationships, with um, oh god, what well, I could be here all day with different examples, but I think you get what I mean. Those life things, you know, yeah. uh, leadership for some. Um, just really being on top of your game, making sure that you are taking the courses, taking the classes, being educated, um, and that all of the life things around you are flowing well as well as they possibly can. And then the greater good is paying it forward, you know, paying it back, tithing, volunteering, and doing even those little things. It doesn't have to be broad stroke stuff. It can be just the little things yeah. that, you know, not only are you feeling pretty good about yourself because you just did somebody, you know, you just did right by someone, but you made them feel really good too. It can be a compliment. Um, getting up on public transportation for the, a pregnant woman or for uh, the elderly, um, holding an elevator door open for someone, letting somebody in in traffic, who cares? You know, the little yeah. things that you know you're doing you're because you're doing the right thing. And it's really important that you mentioned that, like giving to others, because <clears throat> I know like when I was having self-esteem issues, I said to myself, I'm going to give someone like a genuine compliment a day. And like, honestly, I felt so good Good. giving people compliments (laughs) that I was just like, your hair looks great today. Love those shoes. And I was just like on a roll. And like, it really does give you a high when you are giving to others. It is, I think everyone should try it. Yeah. Just, and like you said, it doesn't have to be big, broad strokes, just like a compliment or like let someone into traffic. Like, even when I do that, I feel good. I'm like, oh, okay. You know? Yeah. It's, it's just as really simple. It, that's it, and to your point. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a, it's not, you know, it's not a big deal to do a lot of the things that are going to make you feel good. But when you take a deeper dive within yourself, mm-hmm. you're going to need, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need the, certainly you want to be tenacious about it. In other words, you want to stick to the work that is to be done. Um, especially if you go through a book like mine, because it's all, we call it a regime because it's an organized way of doing things. So we get it Mm -hmm. all organized for you. And then you take your time going through each chapter, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, 
um, gosh, I, I, I lost my train of thought, but the idea being that, oh, co- co- uh, courage, right? So yeah. not only tenacious, but the courage that it's going to take, because when you start taking those deeper dives within yourself, it is going to take courage. You have learned things along the way, whether it be with your natal tribe, whether it be through your faith, yeah. I'm just saying, whether it be through your educative institutions, you know, college, peer groups, uh, even and social media, the things that you're garner, you garner from there. Self-esteem 101. Okay. It's never compare yourself to someone else, right? Exactly. That's sim- simple stuff. How darn hard is that though, when you're on social media sometimes and it's going hard. Wow, really hard. And this is what our kids are being brought up in as well, because that's, that's what they, they, they know what they perceive to be truth as opposed to what is real. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be really, really careful, especially, you know, uh, 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 us, the, the art, the elders that are teaching the, the, you know, the youngers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I would, I would submit that we need to stop giving these kids, these devices as much as we do, you know, kind of cut the time a little bit, a little more family time, a little more outdoors time, certainly, you know, getting enrolled in things things like sports or choir or the things that will actually be that are that are life skills that will ha- help them in a, in 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 life. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's no, simple. I agree. I mean, I feel like I was the last generation to kind of have that sweet spot of like yeah, like the the Nintendo 64, some of the electronics but we were still outdoors playing like our parents would let us go out and run around the neighborhood till the sun came down. And then now it's like all the kids do is they stay inside and they're on social media, you know, depression and suicide rate is higher than ever for kids because they're comparing themselves to what they see on the internet. And us as parents, we're guilty too. They see our actions of us like scrolling and looking and, or we're filming our TikTok videos in front of them. Like, you know, I feel to be like a blogger and all that stuff, like it's a full-time job and you got to like, you know, creating the content, doing the films now. I know. And editing. And it's hard for me to do that because I want to be with my kids. I don't want to have to like Mm -hmm. subject them to like my own selfish needs, you know? Right. Um, Well, I mean, you know, everybody needs, there's there's a balance that you want to strike, right? Everybody, you know, you have your needs as well. And certainly as a mother, you want to make sure that your children are happy as well. That's a whole nother show. I think, but the most important part is that they know that they're loved and that they're loved yeah. for who they are and mm-hmm. that, and that, um, and that they understand that what, what reality is and what it isn't. Um, you touched upon a point that I touch upon frequently, and that is, you know, CDC came out a couple of months ago with a report and said 44% of our middle age, uh, middle school, high school, and some college, age, you know, ages the beginning college ages are, you know, are really in a bad way as far as depression, anxiety, wanting to commit suicide or have committed suicide. These are alarming numbers. Numbers. And at the core of all of this, at the, at the, at the very core is lack of self-esteem. And, and, and so when I was a kid, you know, there were bookstores that we had Walden books, we had border books, we had Barnes and Noble. I would walk into a bookstore and there would be one little cubby thing and it was called self-help. And that's where I went for my health. Now, personal, they call it personal development. Now it's a billion dollar industry and it's a whole path of the story. Like it's immense, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And that is because people are looking, they are searching, they need answers. They want help, assistance, and support. Mm -hmm. And this is what books like, I don't care if it's my book. I'd I'd love you to have my book because I think it's a great tool, but any of that work, there are courses, there are classes, there are meetups, there are YouTubes, there are documentaries that you can go on and find for free that will help you definitely help you along your journey. Yeah. So you've reintroduced mirror therapy in your book. So it was originally spoken about by Louis Hayes. So how does that actually work? So Louise Hayes was a really phenomenal woman who started up in her later years, also a publishing company that, that, that uh, catered to those that were in the self-help industry, the personal Mm -hmm. development industry. And she, now I don't know if she started it. I know that's where I picked up on it. And then Jack Canfield from the chicken soup for the soul series also used it in his work. I knew that mirror therapy um, was something that once I tried, it was something I just really wanted more people to know about. And that is when you take the deeper dive 
within yourself and you are looking in the mirror and talking to yourself and you are saying the things that you need to hear because usually you're all up in your head about oh, stuff. Yeah. I mean, it is, is where it stays. And if you're journaling, that's great because you're getting it out on paper and that helps immensely. But when you're saying to yourself, Hey, Susie Q, let's call her Susie. Q. I love you. Mm-hmm. I really love you. And I love who you are and I love who you've become and the work that you've done. And I also want you to know that I forgive you for that time that, or for the moment you forgot or whatever it is, and then add on, right? Yeah. Uh, so I love you. I forgive you. Um, I, uh, whatever, whatever the work is you need to do um, is really um, impactful when you're saying it to yourself right? When you're looking and you, you know, a lot of people get very moved by this. Some people will break down and cry. Because yeah, no. You're saying the things to yourself that you wished others would have said to you. You are, you are validating yourself, you know, because other people, you were waiting for other people to do it. Well, this is called self-esteem. This is not called, I'm going to wait for everybody else to validate me esteem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. So the deal is no, truly, the deal is you have to be whole and complete on your own with your own self esteem uh, to be, you know, to be, to be really living happy, healthy self esteem. We often hear, I'm enough. You are enough. I am enough. He is enough. And she is enough. Well, I invite you to think, to go and take a look at what enough is as a definition. And it is only as much as is required. Well, enough then isn't enough, is it? Because I know that I am so much more than enough. And I think you are too. Mm -hmm. So be careful of the wording also that you are using that you think is happy and healthy and might not be as strong as and, and, and empowering as you think. Yeah. That is a really good point with enough because I have done that mirror therapy, you know, growing up younger, I had a lot of self-esteem issues and it it took me a lot to get to where I am today to actually be here talking on a podcast because of my own insecurities and self-esteem and am I good enough, blah, 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 blah. The list can go on, but it really does help. Like when you talk to yourself and you have to be like your own best friend, your advocate, you have to advocate for yourself. Yeah. You do. And it really is powerful. You know, I used to think like, oh, I'm ugly and I'm not good enough. And like, I had to like sit in the mirror and be like, you are beautiful, Christina, you know, like you are worthy of love and you are worthy of everything that's great. And I used to say, and it's really important, like I am enough. And you're right. Like we have to be careful with the words because the definition you just gave, it's like, we are more than enough. Yeah. Enough is not enough. It's not enough of a word. Yeah, no, that is, and I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I feel like people can easily go and say that to themselves in the mirror and we have to realize like- It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. I try it. Just go in for like 30 seconds and try it with yourself and see what it's like. Hey, hi, hey, Christina. You did, man, you did a great job today on that podcast. And I want to compliment you for that because you know what? You're a rock star. And all those times that I thought that I wasn't good enough and I wasn't pretty enough and that nobody gave a good- you know, God darn about me. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm sorry about that. And I want you to know how sorry I am about that and see, like, you can start feeling this stuff, like rising up and, you know, your chest yeah. and your heart chakra starts going, well, what, <laughs> you know, it's so <laughs> powerful. It's so impactful. And I, and I just love, I love the process. So I wanted to put it in the book so that others would understand just how, again, impactful and empowering it is. Yeah. You know, you self-esteem, you know, is the number one thing that's going to help you get to where your goals are and what you want to achieve in your life. Like, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you know, you have like, you went out there and you achieved what you wanted to do. And like, yes, you probably had a little hesitation, but like your perseverance and your self-esteem, like, and knowing like got to, got you to where you want to be you know? Yeah. And And again, it takes courage. Remember that courage is a huge part of all of this, especially Mm -hmm. when you start reading the book and you start doing the work that's in the book. You know, we've got, there are, we got Clarissa's corner, the clarion call affirmations. We've got case studies. There's a review, there's homework, there's stuff in here. I mean, when you take, if I were to read you, let's see the chapter reinvent, 
for example, let's see what some of the affirmations are. I will become the person I was always meant to be. I will not settle for less than I deserve. Any one of these, just take them one at a time. So if you, if your mantra for the next week would were to be, and you, you know, and I do this, I hang it on my refrigerator and I stop every morning at the refrigerator and I do the thing. I've got my vision board there. I've got all the stuff I want, everything I want to manifest and these phenomenal affirmations. But just think of you did every day, I will not settle for less than I deserve. That's it. That's all you said to yourself every day for the next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a big one. It's huge. It is because, a huge one. Because deserving is one of those things that people think they don't deserve. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So here's another one. Um, I know that I deserve only the best for myself. I am not what others think of me. And by the way, what others think of you is none of your business, right? It's not your business, but you are not sometimes the perception that they have of you yeah move on i was created for greatness and to inspire others uh i am excited about who i am becoming as i map out my future and by the way the book is chock full of these but if you were to read those aloud every day um and they are each affirmation is chosen for you know each each uh, chapter starts with a re word mm -hmm. and um they're powerful stuff. The first chapter is release because if you don't, you know, like release all of the stuff you it doesn't serving you, right? Mm -hmm. All the stuff you learned from every, you know, all those things that formed you before. And I'll tell you something: release is probably the most important part of the book, and, and the most difficult yeah. is to let go of what doesn't serve you and to unlearn some of the things you've learned. Hey friends, I hope you are enjoying this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. This podcast would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of you, my wonderful community. To support your mama's podcast, please click the support link right down below and you can donate just as little as 99 cents. Also, follow me in the Shop Like to Know It app where you can follow me with all my exclusive content all the way from baby products I love, fashion and style and everything in between. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I think that is the hardest thing because people hold on to like, like that victim mentality and, you know, oh, like this happened to me, so I'm not able to move forward in this way. And that is probably the hardest part is to get through that part. And then the rest is just kind of like an open field and just constant every day, you know, taking steps, like doing the I am affirmations, the mirror therapy the, the mirror therapy journaling and journaling and uh, acts of kindness. Yes. And the acts of kindness. Um, and then here's the other thing going back real quick about, you know, I am good enough. I, I, I am enough. Um, um, God, what was I going to say? I don't know why I'm just, I, I, I have so much I want to say. I can't get it out quick enough. Oh, I know. Um, what you mean. I'm the same. I, yeah, I do. I just, Oh, you're for, so when you go back to failing, right. When we go back to, Oh my God, the fear part of it all. So fear is an acronym. We say face everything and rise. So just get over it. You know, fear is fear. It's part of life. Okay. Oh, well, but I will tell you that fear has absolutely paralyzed me on many different way, occasions in my life. And so knowing that tomorrow is not promised. I'm saying, is fear really serving you? You know, is it really helping get you where you want to go? Probably not. A little no. bit is good. Use it as a motivator, but don't let it block you. And akin to fear is failure, right? It's, oh, I'm so afraid I'm going to fail. What if I fail? But what if you don't? What if you don't fail? And yeah. fail as an acronym is first attempt in learning, right? So nothing is usually perfect the first time around, you know, my first time on the runway, my first time in front of a camera, my first time on a microphone. What is not perfect? Yeah. You know, you learn as you go, you learn as you go and you enjoy the process knowing that if it's what you really want, you're going to make it happen. Yeah. One thing that I've learned by, by speaking to a bunch of different people is that if you have a desire for it and you have a little bit of fear, go for it. It's meant for you. You're supposed to learn in that fear. You're supposed right. to grow in that. Right. Because if we always had like the blessings automatically, we would never really understand or appreciate the blessing and the work that we have gone through to, to get no to doubt. people. No so doubt. like I said, if it if you have a little bit of fear and you really want to do it, go for it. 
And you'll never know. Cause like the, the grass could be greener on the other side. You just never know like where you, and it could be even a better spot than you even imagined. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And the other acronym I have is I like to live high. And that is, I like to live in honesty with integrity in greatness and in, and with honor. And if you can bring those, th- those are, those are, those are values. This is part of my value system. Mm-hmm. And those I think are some of the tougher ones to bring to the table because not everybody else is honest. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a hard one for me because it's like, wait a minute, I'm like so radically honest that, you know, I probably, you know, I'm like, oh, I live in radical honesty. <laughs> Why are you not doing the same? And so I find that for me, it's kind of crushing when other people aren't. And I, and I really impress upon um, everyone the importance of being honest and living it honestly. You know, um, it's it's just a whole different ball game. Living in integrity. You know, those these are your these are your moral principles. This is your moral uprightness or your you know your standards, uh, which are really important. Again, as parents, especially, what are you passing on to your kids? This is also. Who are you when no one else is looking? Who are you when no one else is in the room? Right. Yeah. Uh, greatness is that is, uh, gra- gratitude or greatness. It depends. I'm, I'm kind of back and forth with those two G's and high because they're both important. I live in gratitude. It's a huge part of my day. Thank you so much for another day that I get to do that. I get to do this thing called life. And I like to live in greatness because I want to be a better person tomorrow than I am today. Mm-hmm. And that's another part of, of, you know, living in happy, healthy self-esteem. And then with honor, I want to be able to, um, you know, to live in honor. You know, I was on Survivor. I'll tell you a real quick story. You know that I was on Survivor, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, I won and you won the show. It did. Congratulations. So you, did your, you did your homework. Thanks. It was in Italy, but it was fine. So there, were, there was a moment, you know, you're not supposed to eat. So we had a couple of younger, beautiful girls. I was already in my 50s when I did this, when I did it some years ago. But um, there, there were some pretty girls and, you know, we were, we had to do this thing and get on a helicopter and whatever else. And, and the girls coerced the helicopter driver to go in and get some snacks <laughs> and bring them back into the helicopter on the, you know, on the, on the, on the lowdown, right? Like, yeah. so nobody would see. So he hands the bag over, he gets up in the air and he hands the bag over to the girls and they just start ripping this paper bag open and whatever else. And they started to pass some things up to me, right? And I turned around and I went, no, 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 thanks. That's okay. Thanks a lot. Now we're starving. We are starving. I had lost 20 pounds in, in two and a half months on that island. Oh so we're God. really hungry. We're starving and we're getting weaker by the day. And Mind you, it was a junk food, but there were rules to yeah. playing this game. Mm-hmm. And some people may look at me like, oh, well, who the hell do you think you are on your damn high horse? What the heck? I mean, you know, I, whatever, right? Yeah. It wasn't on my high horse. It's living with integrity and honesty and living it with honor means doing the right things. And the rules were that if I had an advantage because I had eaten something and the other, you know, 15 people on the ground didn't have anything to eat, it wasn't fair. It yeah. wasn't apples to apples, right? So some people find that to be rather radical and very severe and super strict and whatever. That's how I live my life. No, you. No, I love that. I've never heard of uh, high um, and breaking it down like that. I, I mean, I just I think that's because I made it up. Christina, I made it up. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. I love it. I mean, I'm so glad you're able to share it on my platform. But you know, honor and integrity is it's a big thing, and a lot of people lack that. Yes, they do. Days. And you know, commend you for not cheating in the game. You know, yeah. and look, yeah. you ended up winning. You know, yeah, because yeah, it was an interesting time. And 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 any and, and and again, when you do, if I had taken something to eat. It would have, it would have taken care of the, the problem in the moment, but I would have, I, it would have just, the anxiety and the guilt would have guilt. just, yeah, would have killed me, would yeah. have killed me. Yeah. The guilt would have killed me. And I don't want to go, I don't want to live in, you know, I, they're going to sound woo woo. I don't want to live in those lower vibrational emotions. You know, mm. I want to, I want to keep living in, in higher, you know, in higher elevation, you know, emotions. Somebody had asked me a question today. And it was like, what do you do? Like with all the mean girls and the women that are jealous of you. And I went, I don't know. Are they, I don't see them. I don't feel that. I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, it's like not even a part of my peripheral. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, and this is what happens when you start to live this way and you're, you know, you, you are vibrating on a higher energy, a higher energy level, by the way, I am imperfect and I don't always get it right, but I strive and I try. And, uh, and I think that, you know, I really don't see around me. I don't feel that around me. Right. No. Yeah, no, that's good. No, Clarissa, I love all this information. I think it's really great. And a great reminder to be confident, have the self-esteem. And, um, I have four questions I ask all my guests and I would love to hear your answers and I can't wait. for them. So the first one is who and what inspires you? Um, what is, who inspires me are the, the people that I see, I can see more in them than they can see in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I love to be their cheerleader. I love to be their cheerleader. I love to say, but you can, and you know, you can, and you can not going to talk like that on my watch. I wrote a book about self-esteem. So, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So love to be the cheerleader, their rah-rah session and to, you know, to help you know, to give people a, not a leg up, but I, you know, when you tend your hand backwards towards somebody and you help them up, yeah. you know, that when you tend your hand forward, you'll, you'll find someone there for yourself as well when you need. So, um, yeah, that's who really inspires me are the people. I love the work that I'm doing with the book. Um, I love the feedback I'm getting because it's landing and people are, 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 you know, are doing some really great things, um, with their lives because they know they can. And the second question is, what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? The importance of relationships, mm. the importance of relationships, um, to nurture them, to, um, to continually work on yourselves, therefore, you know, yourself, therefore work on relationships. Relationships are tough. Other people, yeah. you know, they're kind of a pain in the took us sometimes, you know, I mean, Tell me about it, it. Takes a, yeah, it takes a lot of patience and I wasn't born with patience or tolerance. So for me, it's a little bit, it, you know, it's a, it was a bit of a challenge. I wasn't taught what good relationship looked like at home. Um, and my business was a business basically where you're either alone a lot. So as a model or, an, you know, acting yeah. or whatever it was, or you're in a, you're in the room with different people, every different photographer, different hair, makeup, hair, makeup, people, different, uh, stylists, different, and it's always different. So anybody's great for one day, right? It's always fun when you're just seeing somebody for the first time and possibly the last, Yeah. but creation of relationships and, 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 and nurturing those relationships is something that is really important and it will serve you for a lifetime. No, I love that. Great answer. And then my third question is, what's the essential part of your daily routine? Um, the essential part of my daily routine is definitely the morning. I get up very early um, and uh, read my affirmations. Um, you know, I've got this mantra. I, I talk to the universe. It's kind of what I do. I've got it all written up it's right there on the, you know, again, on the, on the refrigerator where I can see it, where I remind myself that I have to do that after which the lounge music or the chill music goes on. Everything is really, you know, it's very Zen in my house. I've got the diffuser with the essential oils. Um, I have essential oils that I, I put on every day and, you know, make sure that I, I smell some beautiful, some of the most beautiful, uh, you know, gifts that the, the earth has given us i.e. through plants and herbs i love peppermint for example and lavender i you know, breathe them all day long um and i just try to get you know a couple little self-care moments in there as well um uh and and that's really it and that's you know i, I keep myself projected toward you know what i'm doing in the moment and how it, it could potentially be helping someone else i have a mastermind for example just started yesterday I've got an event coming up for women globally that I'm very excited about. Uh, this book definitely, not only is it in Barnes and Noble, which means I've been doing the book signings all over the United States. I did one up in Vegas um, in the United States. I've been you know, doing the book signings and you know, encountering the people that are actually buying the book has been yeah. really, really cool. Oh yeah. I'm sure it's like super inspiring too, like helping women and men, like just become better versions of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, I'm sure it's very humbling. Oh, it is. It's so, it, it's super gratifying. Yeah. Um, and then my last question is best advice you've ever received. This is the hardest one, I think, for me. I, gosh, uh, uh, the best advice I ever received. Oh, you really stumped me there because, you know, I'm, I live in kind of affirmation world and, you know, um, all the good things that, um, 
honestly, I, I'm stumped. I have to say I'm stumped. <laughs> my, my grandmother, my grandmother, um, Clarissa, because I'm the fifth generation of firstborn girls, you know, by the name of Clarissa was my greatest inspiration. And she would, um, she would always tell me, um, to slow down. And I think that there, there was, and I would go, slow down, what the heck is she talking about? I got a life, yeah. I got things I got to do. And I'm, you know, <laughs> and I think what she saw was, I would, you know, just kind of like really take those moments to, to smell some flowers, you know, yeah. to do, here's, here's something that I'll, I'll leave you with. And it, and, and it kind of helps tie it in with what I just said about grandma. You know, you can, you know, I, I can do anything. You can do anything. You can do anything. If you can do anything. Well, yeah. Okay, great. I don't know that I'm going to be called by NASA tomorrow and I'll be on the moon next week, but I do know that um, you can do anything until you can't. And what I mean by that is tomorrow is not always promised. Yeah. Who do you need to pick up a phone and thank? Who do you need to send a thank you note to? Who do you need to um, pick up a phone and ask forgiveness from who do you need to pick up a phone and just say I love you just call and just to say that nothing more uh who do you need to say I, say, I so appreciate you and what you've meant to me in my life mm -hmm. uh you know I, and I think that I know it, it may sound a little sappy but it's really empowering again empowering when you do this sort of thing the the the, the feeling it's almost the same feeling as getting up for someone on public transportation a pregnant woman or, or the elderly and having giving them your seat yeah. it's the same thing Totally. And even here, there may be, you know, that there may be people that you need someone that you may need to call or make amends with and when it's uncomfortable, because you don't know what kind of reaction you're going to get on the other side. Right. Yeah. But I urge you to do it. And grandma, I think saw, saw in me some of the moments that might've been passing me by because I was running so quickly. I needed to slow up. Think about life and what life really is and what it means. It's not always an accomplishment. It's very often an emotion. Mm -hmm. um, so there you go. Oh, I love that answer. Well, Clarissa, thank you so much for coming on today's podcast. It was such an honor to have you on. It was such a fruitful conversation. And thank you everyone for listening. Don't be shy. Go say hi. All of her links are down below in the show notes. I would definitely recommend checking out her book. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.